All Elite Wrestling as a television product, as a television brand, has existed for three months. You've had three months worth of AEW Dynamite episodes. They made it to TV. They got themselves that prime time slot, two hours, on a major cable television network. Really kind of largely sight unseen with only a couple of one-off pay-per-views here and there. Actually a really good accomplishment in the grand scheme of things. Certainly didn't hurt to have a billionaire family backing you. No question about that. But nonetheless, they've been on TV for three months now. And as we get ready to head into 2020, I think something is incredibly important for this company if it wants to be successful. They must acknowledge that it's not working and they need to shift their focus and adjust their game plan. It's not working. And I already know what I'm going to get. The, oh, you just want to see them fail because you're a WWE bot type of guy, even though I really don't watch WWE product. And AEW shows are one of the few things I actually still review on this channel. But sure, go ahead with that whack-ass, weak-ass, tired stuff with your bitch ass. Number two, I know I'm going to hear the, well, they're a brand new company, so you got to give them time. Well, that's not necessarily how it always works in the television world. You don't get to use that we're new, we're young excuse for very long. Because results matter. Bottom line matters. And the bottom line is, is since their debut on Wednesday, October 2nd, in the span of three months, this company has found a way to lose more than half of that initial audience. More than half, going from 1.4 million viewers to just around 650,000 viewers. More than half of their audience they have lost in three months. And you could say, sure, the 1.4 million number was due to curiosity. First ever episode, they were throwing a lot at it. It was a big thing, kind of the environment of the night along with NXT going two hours on Wednesday night. So more people are naturally going to be captured in. The 1.4 wasn't going to be immediately sustainable. I agree. But even then, if you allow for a little bit of a drop-off, you're still talking about somewhere between 900,000 to 1 1.1 million viewers a week. And they've fallen woefully below that. And you can make the excuses about NBA games and impeachment hearings and all these other lame excuses. The bottom line is the results aren't there. They have lost over 50% of their television audience in three months. By any measurement, there's no excuse. That's not good. Tis better to accept that and own that and try to address that and fix that than try to pretend that, hey, as long as we're over 500,000 viewers and we're doing okay in the 18 to 49 demographic, that's all that's going to matter. Well, at some point in time, it's not. TNT is not going to want to devote two hours of Wednesday primetime television long term to a wrestling show that traditionally will always generate significantly re less in terms of advertiser revenue in that same slot as compared to another show that might only do 400,000 viewers because it's not wrestling. So this whole thing about performance and demographics, that's that Meltzer Alvarez crap that try and justify uh, what AEW is, and AEW is frankly piss-poor performance. In three months' time, this company went from selling out the Capital One Center up in D.C. to thousands of empty seats in their arenas. Like, you're expecting this to be counterculture to WWE? Well, you shouldn't be running venues like WWE where you have thousands of empty seats just like they do. That's not good. That is not okay. That means <laughs> that you overshot your shot. You overstated your value. You lived in kind of this fantasy world, and that in and of itself is part of the problem. I truly fundamentally believe that too many of the big-time decision makers and shot callers within AEW, from the Young Bucks to Kenny Omega to even a Cody Rhodes to a lesser degree, believed way too much on their own BS and bullshit. Because you got the Meltzers and the Alvarez's of the world talking about how great and awesome they are. You got so many of the hardest of hardcore fans talking about how great and awesome that they are. If that's all they've ever surrounded themselves is with this cocoon of cucking, as I would call it, then they're going to think 
that that appeals to a much larger scale than it actually does. Well, these guys sold a few shirts at Hot Topic and they didn't even have to be on clearance right away. So that must mean they're big deals. And that's not the case. AEW doesn't have a bunch of big names. They don't have a bunch of big stars. And the way that they act in terms of how they present their television product is that you should already know who Kenny Omega is. You should already know who the Young Bucks are. You should already know who John Moxley is. You should already know who Cody Rhodes is. And the reality is, for even casual and mainstream wrestling fans, the three names they're most likely to probably know on your product are Chris Jericho, Jim Ross, and Tony Schiavone. And it might be JR even before Chris Jericho. Two of the three most notable names that you have are commentators. The point I'm getting at here is, no matter how much you've got the hardcore pumping you full of gas, doesn't change the fact that on a larger scale, you're not big time household names. And you should not be working as if you are, featuring yourself as if you are, presenting yourself as if you are. And it shows in their product. Then you also have this weird kind of thing where these guys think they're already stars, so they're in the situation where for the television viewers that largely haven't seen them, that don't know who the hell they are, that if they're putting over people, it's going to make them. Well, it's not making them because to a lot of people, if it's the first time they're tuning in, they have no idea who the Bucks are. They have no idea who Kenny Omega is. Less, but still some, have no idea who Moxley is, no idea who Cody Rhodes is. And as a result, these guys are losing and these guys are putting others over. It carries absolutely no weight at all. If a Chris Jericho puts somebody over, it carries weight because he's been in the business for 20 plus damn years. He's been a big presence on national television for 20 plus years. So if he loses to somebody, it means something. But even in that case, it doesn't mean as much as it once did years and years back because... Throughout the latter portion of his career, Chris Jericho put over way too many damn people way too easily. But still, it's this belief that these guys are bigger stars than they are, and they're not. Which brings me to the presentation of the product. If you want to be counterculture to everything else in professional wrestling, and you want to be a sustainable long-term plan, and you actually want to grow your brand and grow your audience, and grow your market share, which would be the only reason to be in business to begin with, and anything else would just be Mark Cuck crap, which wouldn't surprise me coming from these being the elite guys if that was the case. We don't want to expand. We don't want to grow. Well, then you want to die as a business. And no matter what, professional wrestling, first and foremost, is still a business. And it's time for these guys to put their damn business hats on and stop acting like the marks that they want to have been for the past several years. Stop acting like the marks that you can be and that you are. The whole approach has to change. The whole, we're going to put all the build-up to these matches on YouTube and on Twitter. Well, idiots, you do that to reinforce and follow up. You don't just sit there and announce matches on social media and assume everybody that's going to watch your show follows you on social media because they don't. This whole kind of attitude and mindset of, well, if people want to check us out, then they need to do the work to find out about these people and find out why we should care. No, that's your job. It's your job to tell the audience why they should care. It's your job to tell the audience why it matters. The level of arrogance that has been demonstrated from AEW over the past few months when it comes to how they market and promote, in a lot of cases, really don't market and promote what's actually happening on their television pro programming is astounding to me. The sense of entitlement of, how dare you not know what's going on or who these people are? What in the hell are you in this business for? What the hell did you go and put yourself on primetime television on TNT for two hours every Wednesday night if you wanted to act like that sense of entitlement? It makes no sense. Throwing out matches just to have matches that have no purpose, that have no meaning, the lack of character development, the lack of storytelling, the lack of guys that can actually work and be different as opposed to everybody flipping and bumping the hell around. All of this stuff 
is exactly the type of crap that you would expect from third-rate companies that barely hang on to mediocre television deals or don't even have a television deal at all. You're playing in the major leagues now. You could argue the NFL, which is going to be not for long for AEW if this crap keeps up. They must acknowledge that it's not working and that going into 2020, a significant shift of focus must occur. Otherwise, this company won't be around that long. And that's not sitting there saying the sky is falling. That's a fact. Because even if you want to argue, because it's largely true and it makes sense, that the majority of the people watching AEW anyways are the hardest of hardcore wrestling fans, well, they've still lost a large share of that audience already in the span of three months. What the hell is going to happen three months from now if things continue? Three months from now, we might be talking about them bottoming out at 400,000 and a good week is 500,000 viewers. What do you got to say then? There must be a greater emphasis and focus on building stars. And if that is up to and including... Taking guys like Cody, Omega, the Bucks, and trying to actually make them stars, where if they actually lose to somebody, it means something because you've established these guys with your new audience, then that's what you do. And if you're worried about people like me and other people complaining about the fact, well, of course they won because they're in the elite. Well, we're already complaining about the fact that it feels like if it's not somebody from the elite, it doesn't matter. But a lot of the crap that you're doing is stupid anyway. So what the hell's the difference? Like, you got to have some alpha dogs. This company is severely lacking in alpha dogs. Not just in charisma, not just in personality. They're just lacking in alpha dogs. People don't want to see B-plus players all the time. They don't want to see the submissive type of second-rate type of star. They want to see alphas, damn it. They want to see those take charge type of personalities and individuals. So if that's what you got to do, then that's what the hell you got to do. And I look at it this way. The inconsistency with the people that actually seem to resonate is astounding to me. Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus. He's 6'5 with a mask and does tail whips, damn it. It is obvious that he is the type of guy that if you build him up right long term could have some real mainstream appeal. So you will put him in a match one week and then not feature him the next week. And then when you feature him the following week, it says a second big that for something else. And it makes no damn sense. I even look at Marco Stunt as much as the hardcore people went back and forth about whether or not he has a place in wrestling or not. Who cares? If he truly was, as Alvarez and Meltzer proclaimed, if he truly was the guy that generated the best numbers in terms of viewership, in the first week that he wrestled, then you know damn good and well what you got to do. Then you find a way to feature him every damn week. That's good business. Bad business is sitting there and saying, we're not going to feature him for two or three freaking weeks. Why? We don't know why because we don't know what the hell we're doing. MJF, a guy that can get legit heel heat. The type of guy that you would like to build your brand around the long term. But then you only feature him like once every three weeks. How the hell does this make any sense? Find those guys that can be alphas. And damn it, make them alphas. Because all you're doing right now is this crap with a bunch of misfit toys. And nobody cares. And people are tuning out. Because the matches all look the same. They're all ridiculous. Nobody cares about the personalities. Nobody cares about the stories. Nobody knows the whys because this company is too arrogant to tell anybody the whys. And the whole thing about the match-heavy presentation. A, that's stupid because match-heavy presentation automatically buckets you into a smaller viewership than a less match-heavy presentation. But nonetheless, let's say even say for a second, you want to believe in the combat sport feel of it, and you want to get behind a more serious sport-like presentation, then you still got to build up the personalities. You still, damn it, got to build up the characters. You still got to have stories. You have to have reasons for people to care. You cannot just randomly throw out a match to start the damn show and say, hey, here's two guys flipping the hell around. That's what people are going to pay for because they're not. 
You got fewer people going to your shows, and your attendance has dropped off precipitously in three months, and your television viewership indicates that it has also dropped off precipitously in three months, which means that what you're selling, people ain't buying. And if they're not buying, and you're not adjusting, then ding dong dumb dicks, you're dying. Dying! It shouldn't be that hard. But when your company is run by a bunch of move marks, it's not surprising that it is that difficult. This company would benefit significantly from having a couple of people that didn't flip and kick all the hell away around. That worked a different type of style. Variety is the spice of life. And when wrestling is truly at its best, it's got something for everybody. It's got your roided out freaks. It's got your super giants. It's got your midgets. It's got your freaking work rate guys. It's got everybody. And when you've got that balance and you've got something different, you've got potentially something for everybody where they can say, I don't like this or this, but I really like this or this. And that is enough to be able to get me by. That's when you have a successful product. But instead, instead, we don't get that with freaking All Elite Wrestling, just like we don't get that with WWE. And it's not surprising. Bottom line is, guys, AEW, it's great that they exist. It's great that there's another option. It's great that they have two hours on prime time every Wednesday night. But if things don't change, that's not going to last long. And even if it means eventually they got to switch to a Tuesday night, then that's what the hell they got to do. If that means they have to dramatically shake up their presentation and upset some of their hardest of hardcore fans to grow their audience and ensure sustainability and viability for 2020 and beyond, then that's what they've got to do. Because the hum of the hardcore fans are already tuning them out any damn way. So what the hell difference does it make? Stop with the super heavy emphasis on meaningless spots and moves and matches. It has been proven time and time and time again. Meaningless matches don't move the needle. Characters, stories, personalities, drama, that's what moves the damn needle. It's already irritating enough to see how much professional wrestling has gotten away from just the most basic of fundamentals. Those things that in this era where you've got guys that can do great, incredible athletic stuff would make all of the difference in the world. But so often is the case, these guys didn't bother to actually learn all of these fundamentals because they saw other people just flipping and bumping their way into trying to get over, took the lazy way out and decided, hey, I can small, I can flip around a bunch. I'm not going to bother doing this other crap. I'm just going to bump around. I'm going to pop the live event audience. Well, let me tell you something. When your live event audience is continuing to decrease, even if you're popping them, that doesn't automatically mean that's a good thing for your product. Number two, it doesn't mean that that translates to television viewership. Who was it, Eric Bischoff, talking about the fact no matter how much people cheered and chanted and reacted to Hatsaw Jim Duggan live in person, doesn't mean that he moved the television ratings one way or another because it's true. You're in the major leagues now, boys. And if you want to be a major league brand and not the Bush League brand that it seems more and more like you're destined to want to be like, then the whole operating mindset must change. It's got to be about the television and what takes over on television, what translates on television, and what matters most to television viewers. And looking at your numbers right now clearly indicates it's not translating to your television viewers. And as a byproduct, it's not translating to your live events where fans are going because fewer of them are going every week. I want AEW to succeed so bad because we need healthy, viable alternatives in professional wrestling. But again, unless the mindset shifts and plans change, they're only going to go down from here. And if they keep it up and they stay stubborn and they stay naive, and they listen too much to Meltzer Magoo and Alvarez too. They won't have a company for too much longer.